Hi there and welcome back to Elements for Bloggers. I'm Jenny Elliott and in this video you'll learn how to perform basic touch-ups to your photos. Whitening teeth, fixing blemishes, and correcting under eye circles. Let's get started. Alright, we're back here in the editor workspace and I have opened a photo that I downloaded from Flickr. And don't forget, if you're downloading photos to use for your blog from Flickr, make sure that they have a Creative Commons attribution license. That's what this one has, so I am just fine as long as I give the source right underneath my video here. And I'll do it. There's nothing really wrong with this picture. It looks just fine, but there are a few things that I could do to take it up a notch. The first thing that I see is something I'll do really quickly. I'm going to switch over to the Layers panel on the right-hand side, and I'm going to add an adjustment layer for Levels. We did this in the last video, so you should already know how to do it. First, I'm going to take the highlights and take them way down to where that information starts in the graph. I'm going to take the darks and bump them up just a little bit. And I always take my midtones here and just put them down just a tiny bit to help give it a little extra pop. Switching back to the layers panel now, this is my adjustment layer, so I'm going to call this levels adjustments. Pretty easy. There are three big things we're going to be doing in this photo today. The first two are pretty simple. The third one is a little bit more complex, so I think I'm going to actually break that one off into a separate video so you can play it over and over again without having to go through the whole video. I'd like to draw your attention here to the circles under this beautiful young girl's eyes. This is a perfectly normal thing, but if I had this on my blog, it might be a little bit distracting that she has these circles under her eyes. So it's very, very simple to correct this. What we're actually going to be doing is airbrushing on a slightly lighter shade over the top of it and then adjusting the opacity so it still looks natural. What I'm going to do is create a new layer by clicking the little button at the bottom left hand side of the panel and this looks like a little sticky note with a little corner lifted up on it. I'm going to rename this under eye circles and here we go. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a few levels so we can see what's happening. So what I want to do is I'm going to sample a color for a brush from this really healthy looking area. It's a little bit lighter right here immediately under her eye. In order to do that, I'm going to choose my eyedropper tool and the shortcut key for that is I. And I'm going to just click with my mouse right here on this under eye area. And you'll see that the foreground color down here has changed. So that's the color I've picked up, and now I'm going to apply that, kind of like an airbrush, with my brush. The shortcut key for this is B, or you can select the little paintbrush looking icon. And now I'm going to choose the size of the brush that I want. I'm going to bump this up just a little bit to, mine is around 61 pixels. Just make sure that it's not too big or too small. You don't want anything to be too obvious. And it's in a normal blend mode. The opacity I'm going to take down just a little bit to about, I'll do mine about 45 or so. And this lower opacity level is going to make sure that it doesn't come out so fast that it looks really unnatural. So all I'm going to do here is kind of spray on with my brush, spraying on right to the under eye area. And that's great, but now we have a really white looking area here. And she has a nice sun-kissed look on her cheeks. So I'm going to switch back to my eyedropper tool by clicking I. And I'm going to pick up just this rosy pink color right here. And you'll notice that that changed over here in the foreground. Back to B for brush. There we go. And now I'm just going to kind of dab this on ever so slightly to make sure it blends in nicely. Now, this does not look completely natural yet, and that's okay. We're going to turn it down in just a moment. But first, let's go over to this other eye, and we'll pick up a color from there and apply an, a brush underneath this eye. So, selecting your eyedropper tool again, I'm going to change the color here to, let's see, I'm trying to pick up a light color. That's about as light as we're going to get on that eye. And it's really important to pick up a color from the immediate vicinity right around the same area that you're trying to brush. 
Now moving back to the brush, I'm going to actually shrink this brush down just a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. And now here we go. I'm just going to kind of brush this over the under eye area. And that looks a little bit gray to me. I'm actually going to step that up, step that back a few steps and try picking a different color. Let's see, maybe here. Here, try to get with something with a little bit less gray in it. Switching back to the brush. And that'll do for now. I'm going to go back to my eyedropper and pick up some of this pink rosy cheek color and back to the brush where we'll brush on some of this pink. There we go. So that's going to look really nice. So now let me zoom out and you can take a look at what I've done here. Now if I were to leave it like this, it looks very, very unnatural. It looks kind of like her skin's made of plastic here. That is not the effect that we're going for. So what I'm going to do now is, since I've applied the brushes everywhere I want to apply them, I'm going to go down here making sure that my under eye circles layer is still selected. And I'm going to click on the opacity. I'm going to bump down the opacity, which is how dark that layer shows up. And I'm going to go down until it looks pretty natural. Let's see. Here is about 50% looks good to my eye here. So back on the layer. Let me turn them off and turn the layer back on. Wow, that is a really big difference. But once again, it does not look unnatural. If you find that it looks a little bit fake, make sure you bump that opacity down even further. There's no magic number here. It's just whatever looks good to your eye. Now the next thing I'm going to do is correct some blemishes. And this is a beautiful young girl and she really has no blemishes. So what I'd like to do is apply some of the same techniques and fix some of these stray eyebrows she has over here. So let me zoom in just a little bit. And I'm going to add a new layer. I'll go ahead and double click there and rename this one. Eyebrows. You could say blemishes if you wanted to as well. There are two different tools that I usually use for this. The first one is the spot healing brush, and that's really the easiest one to use. And in a pinch, sometimes it doesn't work very well. You'll get like a smudged look over the blemish that you're trying to fix. And in that case, I'll use the clone stamper tool. Let me go ahead and show you the spot healing brush right now. The one you're looking for is right here. It looks like a little band-aid, and it's called the spot healing brush. And the shortcut key for that is J. And the first thing we're going to do is select our brush size once again. I want it pretty small because I'm just going for really thin eyebrows here. And the most important thing when you're doing it with this method, with the blank layer, is that you make sure that sample all layers is turned on. If you do not check that, then nothing's going to happen when you try to apply the spot healing brush because it's only going to be sampling pixels on that empty layer. So Make sure that sample all layers is turned on here. And watch, you're going to love how easy this is. All I'm going to do is kind of click at the end of an eyebrow and drag, and I'm literally just correcting this by erasing right over the top. What this is doing is it's sampling pixels from the immediate area right around it and trying to duplicate those while still blending it in. So look how easy this is. And sometimes it works really, really well. Watch, I'm going to take this freckle that she has here and just remove it. It's like magic. I wish it was this easy in real life. Sometimes it doesn't work so well. Sometimes if you're using this, you'll have a little bit of a smudge that gets left behind. So I'm going to show you an alternate way to do this using the clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool is a tool that will sample a group of pixels together and those are going to be in the shape of the brush head and you're going to sample those and it's literally going to let you stamp it on top of a different area. So watch this. I'm going to select my brush size here and I'll make this a little bit larger, maybe 30 pixels, maybe a little smaller. Hmm. Here we go. And the blend mode is going to stay normal. And my opacity, you don't want it to be at 100% because that's, because as I said before, that's going to look really unnatural. 
I'm going to put it somewhere around 50% on this. And yet again, make sure that sample all layers is checked here because you are using that blank layer. So all I'm going to do is put your cursor, put the brush head over the area where you want to sample the pixels from, and you want to hold down Alt or Option. Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac. And when you hold it down, you'll see that it changes to like a little crosshair. And so all you do is hold that down and click one time, and that picked up the pixels. Now I'm going to move to a space right beside it and click once. And that has and that has stamped those pixels right over the, the ones right next door. So sample and click and click. And I'm I'm literally copying over the pixels that are here. I'm gonna sample it again and click, click. Let's try the ones up top here. Maybe I'll grab this area, holding down option to grab the pixels, letting it up, and click. And this is the same technique I would use if I was trying to restore an old photograph. And I was trying to heal a spot on there, maybe a, a crack that's in the photograph, or I could reconstruct a corner this way. The clone stamp tool is really, really magical. And this is what people have generally referred to as photoshopping something in the past. I'm going to grab another spot right here above the eyebrow and bring it down just a little bit. So you can use this on any type of blemish freckles or pimples or moles, anything that you don't want on here. If you even have a spot of dust that was on the lens of the camera that's showing up, then you can use this to correct it. So that was the clone stamp tool. Now I'm going to zoom back out and let's take a look. Wow, her eyebrow is so much neater there. Once again, I'm not going to leave it on 100% opacity. This one I'm just going to take down a little bit, maybe about to 85 we want it to still keep a very natural look. And so here we go, I'm gonna turn this layer off. That's the before, and that's the after, just like magic. There's one more thing I'd like to do to this photograph. I'd like to turn your attention to her teeth, which are just a little bit on the yellow side, and we're gonna fix that in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and split off to a separate video, and that way this, which is a little bit harder of a step, you'll be able to watch in isolation, and hopefully not have to scroll through the rest of the video to get back to it. So I'm going to break here, and I will see you in part two of this video.